Hello, I'm Shui Han. I'm gonna talk about key encapsulation mechanism with tight enhanced security in the multi-user setting, impossibility results, and optimal tightness. This is a joint work with Sheng Li Liu and Da Wu Gu. In this talk, we will first record the syntax of CAM and its enhanced security, recall existing impossibility results on tight security. Then, we will introduce our new technical tool called CAMP's rank and show how to use it to obtain our impossibility results. First, let us recall CAM. Key Encapsulation Mechanism, or CAM for short, is a public key cryptographic primitive. CAM has three probabilistic polynomial time algorithms with a key generation algorithm. Alice generates a pair of public key and secret key and publishes her public key PK. With Alice's public key PK, Bob can invoke the encapsulation algorithm to produce an enca encapsulated key and a ciphertext, and send the ciphertext C to Alice. After receiving C, Alice can use her own secret key to decapsulate C and recover the encapsulated key K by invoking the decapsulation algorithm. This way, Alice and Bob establish a shared encapsulated key K and can use it for later use. CAM has many applications, such as in constructing public key encryption, authenticated key exchange protocols, etc. In real-world scenarios, there might be many users. Each of them generates their own keys, and each two of them might communicate and send many ciphertests to each other. This is called the multi-user setting. In this setting, an adversary is able to see all users' public keys and all ciphertests sending over the public channels. Moreover, a powerful adversary may even corrupt some users and obtain their secret keys, and may obtain some keys encapsulated in some ciphertests. The security of CAM would ask the unreviewed keys under uncorrupted users to be pseudorandom. Such a strong yet realistic security is called enhanced security in our work. We formalize two enhanced security notions, enhanced CPA and enhanced CCA. In enhanced CPA security model, an adversary can obtain all users' public keys. Then it can implement several queries. Through in-cap queries, the adversary can obtain newly generated ciphertests CI from the challenger. Then, the adversary can ask to review the key ki encapsulated in CI through key review queries. The adversary can also adaptively crop some users and obtain their secret keys SKI. For unreviewed keys under uncorrupted secret keys, the adversary can ask text queries and receive a challenge, which is either the real key kj encapsulated in cj or a uniformly independent key, depending on the challenge bit B. Finally, A outputs a guessing bit B prime. The probability that B prime equals B should be negligibly close to one over two. To prove the security of a cryptographic scheme like CAM, a common way is to base schemes security on the hardness of a well-studied program through a security reduction. A security reduction turns any adversary A running in time TA, breaking scheme's security with advantage epsilon A into an adversary B running in time TB, solving the hard problem with advantage epsilon B. A reduction establishes an inequality between TB over epsilon B and TA over epsilon A with a factor L. The L called the security loss factor, measures the quality of the reduction, and is smaller the better. It is desirable to have L to be a constant. If a cryptographic scheme has a security reduction with a constant loss factor, then we call it has a tight security. It is desirable to have tightly secure schemes. However, many existing works proved impossibility results on tight securities of many primitives. For example, Morgan, Pass, Shi, 
showed that for deterministic message authentication code and a deterministic digital signature, it is impossible to achieve tight security under adaptive corruptions from bounded round assumptions. For digital signature, public key encryption and CAM, starting from the seminal work by Coron, there is a line of research including Tarkiv, Kiltz, Bazar, Yagar, Li, Sunshine showed that tight security under adaptive corruption is impossible to achieve if the relation PK SK is checkable and one of the following two conditions hold. The first condition requires SK has key uniqueness. Namely, for every PK, there exists at most one SK corresponding to it. The second condition requires SK has key re-randomization. Namely, given a SK1, one can efficiently sample a uniform SK from all secret keys corresponding to the PK1. Existing impossibility results rule out some camps on their tight security under adaptive corruptions. Thus also their tight enhanced security. For example, the L gamma cam satisfies the SK key uniqueness. Each PK has a unique SK, thus it is impossible for L gamma cam to have a tight enhanced security. However, Many well-known camps, including the most efficient Kramshoop and Kurosawa decimate camps from decisional Diffie-Hellman assumptions, their SK has neither key uniqueness nor key re-randomization. For example, their, P their PK equals G1 to X1 times G2 to X2. There are many secret keys X1, X2 correspond to a single PK. However, it is inefficient to do re-randomization unless the discrete algorithm of G1 and G2 is easy to solve. Therefore, for many well-known camps, we do not know whether they have tight enhanced security or not by existing works. Determine, determining whether tightness impossibility holds for such camp schemes needs new techniques. Next, we show our main technical tool in this work called CAMS rank, which is crucial in establishing our impossibility results. Firstly, we study the equivalence of secret keys for CAM schemes when decapsulating a set of ciphertests X. For a set of ciphertests X consisting C1, C2 to CQ, we define an equivalence relation on the secret key space. SK and SK prime are decapped equivalent with respect to X if for every ciphertest C in X, the decapsulation of C using SK equals the decapsulation of C using SK prime. In other words, SK and SK prime has the same decapsulation functionality on the whole ciphertest set X. With this decap equivalence relation, we can partition the secret key space into many equivalent classes. With different X, we may have different equivalence relations on secret key space. In particular, with more ciphertests in X, it may partition the, the secret key space into more equivalent classes. And with fewer ciphertests in X, it may partition the secret key space into fewer equivalent classes. For set X and element C1 in X, if X defines a strict, strictly defined equivalence relation, then X set minus C1. Then we call C1 is an independent element in X. There is another situation that X defines exactly the same equivalence relation with X set minus C1. In this case, we call C1 is a dependent element in X. So, starting from a cipher text, set X, we can drop all dependent elements in it without changing the equivalence relation it defined. In the end, every element left are independent elements. Then we call the resulting subset X prime of X an independent set. X prime is a subset of X, but it consists of only independent elements. 
and define the same equivalence relation with x. For set x, it might have many independent subsets x prime. We define the rank of x and the size of the largest independent set of x. By taking x as a whole ciphertest space CT, we define the rank of CAM, which is the rank of the ciphertest space of CAM and uh, equals the size of the largest independent set of the whole ciphertest space. Intuitively, the relation between independent set and CT is analogous to the relation between a basis and a linear space, and the rank of CAM is analogous to the size of the basis of a linear space, namely the dimension of linear space. However, we note that in general, the decapsulation algorithm of CAM is not a linear function, especially for CCA secure CAMs. So the rank of CAM is different from the dimension of CT, even if CT is indeed a linear space. With the notion of rank, we establish a core technical lemma, which says that if we uniformly pick a cipher test C from X, the probability that X set minus C and X define a same equivalence relation, or C is, is dependent in C, is at least 1 minus Kim's rank over the size of X. Finally, we show how we establish our impossibility results using our technical tool Kim's rank. Our impossibility result is built upon a line of research on using mental reductions starting from Corrin at Eurocrypt 02. The high-level idea of the mental reduction paradigm works as follows. Let R be any reduction algorithm from the security of Kim's enhanced security to any non-interactive hard problem. Firstly, we will construct a hypothetical inefficient adversary A star that breaks the, the security of the primitive with advantage epsilon A star. Then, by the security reduction R, which interacts with the hypothetical A star, we get a lower bound on the security loss factor L by A star's advantage over R's advantage. Finally, we will construct an efficient meta reduction algorithm B, which emulates A star while running R. Suppose that B perfectly emulates the interaction between R and A star, except with probability delta. Then the lower bound of L is epsilon A star over delta, assuming the underlying problem is hard to solve so that epsilon B is negligible. With the mental reduction paradigm, we will show our construction of the hypothetical adversary A star and our construction of the mental reduction algorithm B. By analyzing epsilon A star and delta, we will obtain the lower bound of L, thus establishing our impossibility results. In step one, we show our construction of the hypothetical inefficient adversary A star. In the enhanced security model, a star will first receive public keys of all users from the challenger. Then, for each user, A star issues Q encapsulation queries and receives the encapsulations Cij from the challenger. Next, for each user, A star issues Q minus one key review queries and receives the keys Kij encapsulated in Cij. Here, the indices of the unreviewed keys are uniformly chosen. Then, A star crafts all but one users and obtains their secret keys, SKI. The uncrafted user, I star, is uniformly chosen from 1 to n. With the secret keys, SKI, reviewed encapsulated keys, Kij, and ciphertest, Cij, A star can check whether Kij is the decapsulation of Cij under secret key SKI. Clearly, if the challenger is honest, then the checks always pass. If the check does not pass, A star abots. Finally, A star will ask to test the unreviewed key of the uncrafted user. 
a star will receive a challenge T, which is either the real key encapsulated in C I star 2, or a random key A star wants to output a guessing bit. A star is an inefficient adversary so far. The only inefficient part is how A star computes the final guessing bit. A star will use brute force search to find a secret key SK star and test, and test whether the challenge T is the decapsulation of C I star 2 under SK star. If it holds, then T equals K I star 2 and A star outputs 1 to the challenger. Otherwise, T is random and A star outputs 0. So how A star choose SK star? For the uncrafted user I star, since A star obtains Q-1 reviewed keys, K I star 1, K I star 3, to K I star Q, by the correctness of CAM, the real secret key S K I star of user I star must decrypt C I star 1 to K I star 1, decrypt C I star 3 to K I star 3, decrypt C I star Q to K I star Q, etc. A star will choose a random SK star from all secret keys, which decrypt C I star 1 to K I star 1, decrypt C I star 3 to K I star 3, etc. In other words, SK star is chosen from the equivalence class where the real secret key SK star belongs to, and the equivalence relation is defined by C star 1, C star 3 to C star Q, or X Z minus C star 2. Now we analyze A star's advantage. We know that SK star chosen by A star and the real secret key SK star are in the same equivalence class defined by X Z minus C I star 2. If the equivalence class defined by X Z minus C I star 2 is the same as the equivalence de class defined by X, then SK star and SK I star will also be in the same equivalence class defined by X. This means that using SK star or using SK I star to decrypt C I star 2 would lead to a same result. So in this case, A star using SK, SK star can successfully tell whether the challenge T is the real key encapsulated in C I star 2 or a random key. Thus, A wins. Therefore, A star's advantage is lower bounded by the probability that X set minus C I star 2 and X define the same equivalence relation where C I star 2 is uniformly chosen from X. Then by our co-lemma, this is lower bounded by 1 minus Kemp's rank over Q. This is our construction of A star and its advantage. In step 2, we show our construction of the mental reduction algorithm B, which emulates the interaction between R and A star in an efficient way. First, B receives the public keys of all users from R. Then B proceeds exactly the same as A star. B issues Q in-cap queries per user and receives CIJ from R. And for each user, B issues Q-1 key review queries and receives the keys KIJ encapsulated in CIJ. Again, the indices of the unreviewed keys are uniformly chosen. Then, B also crafts all but one users and obtains their secret keys SKI. With the secret keys SKI, reviewed encapsulated keys KIJ, and ciphertest CIJ, B can also check whether KIJ is a decapsulation of CIJ under SKI for all reviewed keys and all crafted users. B abots if the check fails. So far, B proceeds exactly the same as A star since this part of A star is efficient. Finally, B will ask to test the unreviewed key of the uncrafted user. B will receive a challenge T, which is either the real key encapsulated in C I star 2 or a random key. B wants to di distinguish which case it is. However, B 
He cannot emulate A star since A star uses brute force to find a secret key SK star. Alternatively, B will resort to the efficient rewinding to find a secret key of user I star. B will rewind the corruption procedure n minus one times. In the first rewind, B will corrupt all users but the first user. In the second rewind, B will corrupt all users but the second user, etc. So through rewind, B will corrupt user I star and receive the secret key SKI star from R. We note that this SKI star is output by R, so it may not be the real secret key of user I star. But this SKI star also decrypts CI star 1 to KI star 1, decrypts CI star 3 to KI star 3, and decrypts CI star Q to KI star Q, since B will check this in each rewind. This means that, that this SKI star returned by R also belongs to the same equivalence class as the SK star chosen by A. Now we analyze the probability delta that B does not emulate A star and R perfectly. We know that the SK star chosen by A star and the SK I star used by B returned by R are in the same equivalence class defined by X set minus C I star 2. If the equivalence class defined by x set minus c i star 2 is the same as the equivalence class defined by x, then s k star and s k i star will also be in the same equivalence class defined by x. This means that using s k star or using s k i star to decap c i star 2 would lead to a same result. So in this case, B perfectly emulates a star. Overall, B might emulate A star imperfectly if one of the two band events occur. The first band event is that B fails to get SKI star from R during the rewinds, which may happen with probability at most 1 over n. The second band event is that X set minus CI star 2 does not define the same equivalence relation as X by our lemma. This can happen with probability at most camps rank over Q. So the probability delta that B simulation is imperfect is bounded by 1 over N plus camps rank over Q. This finishes our construction of mental reduction B. In step 3, we can establish our impossibility results on the tightly enhanced secure cam. The security loss L is lower bounded by epsilon a star over delta. If camp's rank is a polynomial, then we can always set q equals n times polynomial, so that camp's rank over q is no more than 1 over n. Consequently, L is lower bounded by big omega n. This suggests that as long as camp has a polynomial rank, then it is impossible to achieve a tight enhanced security based on non-interactive assumptions, and the security loss is at least linear in the number n of users. Then we apply our impossibility results to many well-known camps by showing that their rank is polynomially bounded. For example, for the Kramshoop CPA secure camp, with two ciphertests, we can partition the secret key space completely. So, the largest independent set consists of only two ciphertests, and the rank of the Kramshoop cam is 2. In the full version of our paper, we analyze more cam schemes, including L Gamma, CCA Secure Kramshoop, Kurosawa Desmet, Gay Hofhens, Kiltz Wei, Han Liu Lu Gu, and the now young double encryption paradigm. We show that all of these CAM schemes have a constant or a polynomially bounded rank. Therefore, by applying our impossibility results, it is impossible to achieve tight enhanced security for these CAM schemes based on non-interactive assumptions. And the enhanced security of these schemes inherently suffer from a security loss factor at least linear in the number n of users. We also show that the linear security loss ON is achievable by giving two reductions. For example, 
it implies that the L gamma cam has security loss factor ON for enhanced CPA security. And the cam proposed by Hoffens and Yager has security loss factor ON for enhanced CCA security. This, together with our impossibility results, show that for cams with polynomially bounded rank, the linear security loss factor for enhanced security is optimal. Let me now conclude the talk and sum up our contributions. We define the realistic enhanced security models for CAM, which considers adaptive user corruptions and adaptive encapsulated key reviews in the multi-user and multi-challenge setting. We develop a new technical tool called CAMS Rank to identify a class of CAM schemes for which impossibility of tight reduction holds. We prove that as long as the rank of a CAM scheme is polynomially bounded, the incurred security loss factor is at least linear in the number n of users when reducing to any non-interactive assumptions. Our impossibility results rule out the tight enhanced security of many well-known CAMs, including Kramshoop, Kurosawa Desmet, since the ranks of their CAM are polynomially bounded. Finally, we show the linear security loss is achievable and optimal for CAMs with polynomially bounded rank. For more details, please check out our paper on ePrint. That's all. Thank you for your listening.